ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's try something new tonight. Uh, wife is in bed. It's uh, currently uh, way past my bedtime, but you know what? I've been sick for a while, so my sleep state is all kinds of fucked up. Uh, let's uh, let's learn how to take apart a Remington 597 today. Uh, just got this one back. Uh, it, was, it was actually my first gun build, uh, so might as well uh, be my first gun video. Um, yeah, uh, let's just go with that. Um, basically, it requires pretty much all Allen keys. There are very few, uh, very few torques on this thing. Probably none at all. Uh, this Allen is a uh, 159 uh, 930 off of the uh, Wheeland Engineering. Um, two of them. Uh, let's get her. Let's, let's get her taken apart. I know I didn't really see any of these videos being on, uh, online that much. It's a, kind of a hated, hated weapon. I know a lot of people just talk all, throughout, throughout this entire video. They don't really show you how to do things, but um, this is a lot. This is a lot simpler than having a than having to stick an Allen wrench in there and turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Just get one of these little tools, or get a quarter inch drive uh, from your from anywhere. You know your your local scumbags, pretty much your local. Resource and development centers such as uh, Home Depot or Harbor Freight or whatever the Canadians have or um, whatever South America has. I'm not quite sure. I've never been there. Never been to Canada either. Wife's Canadian, but I'm not. Uh, got these two little guys. Set them off the side for later. There's going to be a short one and a long one. Uh, short one goes in front, long one goes in back, longer clearances in it, in it what have you. Uh, and then you essentially just take your, your, your thumb and press up. Set that off to the side for a while. Uh, I bought, I bought the synthetic stock with my 22 uh, LR and, um, kind of regret it after a while because, uh, that was one over here. Oh, whatever. I kind of regret it after a while because I've, ha I've had nothing but problems with this gun. Uh, but you're not here for my opinion, you're here for a takedown video. Ugh. Also, always check to see if your weapon is unloaded. Um, I took mine out of the safe, everything in my safe is, uh, is clear, so no need for that. I always check it before it comes in, always check it when it comes out. Um, previous hand. Um, there's a drop pin in the back, right here. Come on, frame. Very, very back of that sucker. Right, Zad, and you just kind of press her down using a pin punch or what have you, and then go from there. Be back into focus using using a using a manual focus camera. I can't afford the fancy stuff quite yet on this channel, but it's always fun. Uh, trigger springs, what have you. Um, I took off uh, a couple things on here. Um, did a Volquin, um, uh, 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 what's the word, uh, strike, uh, strike hammer on it, and uh, went from there. Uh, so essentially you can press this trigger when it's not in safe mode. Um, red exposed is not safe. Black exposed is safe. For future reference, I'm um, not going to get into that quite yet. Uh, please request if you want to see that, but this is just a simple takedown um, of all internal springs, what have you. Oh, I'm sorry, of all um, action pieces uh, from there far out. I just got done installing this brand new one. The other one looked like crap. Uh, blew out three ejectors, and um, I, pr I pretty much just set the set, them, set the sucker in my safe and said, you know what, I'm freaking tired of it from there. Now the back end, uh, back end, uh, back end Allen bolts are a uh, 874 877 which is roughly around, roughly around a, let's get out the mighty money micrometer here, or calipers here. Area. Uh, this is going to be a 
roughly in inches around a 10. And the first set's going to be a 12 millimeters. It's three. And for the newer one, it's going to be a uh, two, give or take. OK. Let's get this back, in, let's get this back end off. Um, I always find it easy just to kind of sit back here and kind of BS a little bit with it because, you know, if you, if you don't take your time with these things, especially in your first teardown, you're not going to remember everything. You're not going to, you're not going to figure out what's going on with it. You're not going to see any flaws with it. You're, you're just going to take it down and, and, you know, be, be more curious about taking it down the first time than you are the actual, the actual learning your, your, your pieces of, your piece of machinery. And, and that's pretty much what, what, what these are, these pieces of machinery that, that, that function. Um, then you're going to uh, pull your action piece back. Your left guide rod is going to come out. Uh, always remember to remove the spring when you're done with that. And what I find easy to do is remove the, the, um, the charging handle and then rotate the uh, I always forget what they call that. Um, always up uh, Always remove the bolt from it, and that way you're able to see the the the, um, the right channel spring, and you can take that off. Or if you're if you're like us, we don't really need to. The spring looks in pretty good condition, nice and greased up. Um, on the back end, you have a this standard bolt, uh, firing pin, ejector, ejector spring, okay. group assembly, what have you. Uh, uh, you're going to take a small pin punch. Always. Have a little bit of a spacer in the back end. Okay. So essentially, what I did there was I stuck it in a vise sideways, uh, clamped it, switched these two pieces up, took a pin punch, smacked it in. Let's go to the table. Uh, this is under spring pressure, so you're going to encounter a little bit of a little bit of grooving. And the guy before me uh, had put um, what seems like axle grease in here. That's, that's exactly what that is. That's exactly what that is. Yeah, tell by the the rollout, it's not it's not any kind of machine gun grease. It's not kind of any kind of grease you want in your gun, almost for longevity purposes. So we're gonna we give it a little dippy dippy right there, uh, and the trusted pops number nine stuff. Look at that fresh batch. And that's where and that's where it goes for a little while. Okay, to come back to square one, um, here's the old bolt. Um, old bolt was a little charred up, uh, even though it had a obviously not as not as um, pristine as the other one was. Um, had it, there's a there's a weird groove in the very bottom, almost like it didn't have enough relief in, in, in the tail end of it. Well, what happened with this is that it is it didn't collapse fully against the head, and every time I'd fire it, I'd blow, I'd blow a case in half in the, uh, in the chamber. So I had, a, I had a bit of an issue figuring out what was going on with it. And, uh, uh, you know, kind of kind of dealing with that shit. But you're not here for this. This might be a, a two-parter right here. This thing is in there too, man. I like it. I almost, I almost don't want, don't want to fuck with it. But, but we must, we must fuck. We must fornicate. <laughs>
strap-on tool. We're getting in those all hard to reach places, baby. You can see that action piece pop back. Actually, I wonder. I wonder something. You know what? Before we fuck up the new one, let's try it on the old one and see what's see what's going on with her. That thing's going right to shit. Here's the weird thing. I only have about five, maybe six hundred rounds through it. And just the way it was treating me was was no less bueno. It was uh as the uh as a common lingo around here, it's it just it didn't it didn't meet up to to anyone's expectations. I could take it out to the range and all of a sudden it's blow blow up in my freaking face. I mean I'm a lefty, so you know it, it you know when you're holding when you're holding a right a right hand ejected gun uh, out there and it blows up on you, you know, you get things in your face and you're not always wearing goggles, but you know you should, but that's that's a topic for another time, gun safety and what have you. Speaking of gun safety, this tool is also good for another thing. Hi. Remember, kids, never drink beer and, and, uh, and fire guns. Luckily, we're not firing guns. We're working on them. Okay. No, you're all focused. Fuck. Oh, some guy on the interwebs is going, why the fuck are you doing it that way, you dumb shit? But I don't care. I'm doing something. He's just sitting on his computer doing nothing. Keyboard. I hope some get it down. This is just a guy in the garage. I'm not taking things down. I'm not a... Not a no pro at taking this shit apart. I'm just I I just do it. Cause no one else will. You know you got AV AV AVE on that uh, on that end, taking apart tools in the mining trade or wherever trade he's in. Respect the guy a whole hell of a lot. Uh, replied to him super drunk one night and he goes, "Yes, I am, and thank you." And I just wanna just wanna say thank you for that. It really kind of put me in my place about how to be how to be presentable, and um, it really shows what kind of person he is. Figured things out, but Electric Boom hasn't in in the aspect of things because you know Electric Boom's just, just a savage. He's a he's um he just uh he's got two caterpillars over his eyebrows. You know, <laughs> he's 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 a great guy. Uh, I mean. Met him at the um, at the Patreon exhibit down in uh, down in SF. Uh, it was uh, didn't didn't have a channel then, but it was um, it was quite quite awesome just to see just to see people in person and they uh, see, see how they how they work with things. It was right, 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 fucking there. God damn it! <sighs> you guys are coming to me for me for advice. Ah. There's a plunger, and there is the screw. Once again, fucked with axle grease. Jesus Christ, man. No, as a as an old pipe smoker, I actually used to have these around for actual pipe use, but got the got the vape going through 
going for me. So now I don't have to worry about that shit. Uh-oh, that's not good. Get the hops in there, clean that sucker out a little bit. Hops is a great degreaser. Pull that shit out of there. Always make sure you. He goes, oh well, this is this is this is you know, prosperous. I go, I, I I I can see if you're working on a, you're working on a um, anything anything other than a anything other than an AK, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to current issues. Like, AK is Glock, maybe 1911s. This this is just this is just child's child's play. This is nothing. This is just my. This is absolutely nothing. Screws. Old ejector. Did I throw, did I throw them away? I may have thrown the old the old one away. Okay, so before we fuck the new one over, we're gonna we're gonna factor just a little bit by factor. adding a new extractor to it. Um, compared to the old extractor, it's a little bit a little bit actually there's not much different with it. A little, a little bit longer than the tail end. I can see that very well, but it's a little longer than the tail end. Oh, I haven't figured out what, what I'm going to name this video yet. USB 271 fucks things over once again. That, that, that could be a fun one. Oh, man, depression is a motherfucker. I guess, I guess it doesn't help that I consume a lot of alcohol, though, does it? Just a quick tip, and just for the minute, um, if you... <laughs> Before you start a project, always sweep up the floor around you, and you know, j j just when you're bored in the shop, just start dropping small things on the uh, on the ground, you know, j for, from a general area, just so you know, like what they sound like when they start ping on the floor, and then and then you can use your memory to re recall the sound that you just heard and figure out where it landed on the floor. Very, very, very helpful. Um, if <laughs> can you guess what I just got done doing? Ew, that could have been bad. Here's we're gonna put a okay, little so bit of pressure we're do on here. That. Tail piece. Oh, 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 engage or essentially you want to dive it in, and then once it reaches a certain point, kind of kick it back in, and it'll find its own, it'll find its own little forward. And that is how you install uh, a new a new extractor. Not part of the video, but you know what? Might as well make it part of it. It'll slide right into place, right? So, but if you smack that sucker with a hammer in the in the cockeyed position, it ain't gonna go anywhere. So you want to hit that. Well, there's a notch right here, and it's gonna go straight smack dab in where where we want it to go. In order to do I'm just going to carefully nudge her back into place so that both sides, well, the one side closest to the shear wall is flush. I'm going to check for action. Check for action with pin punch. Because that's all that's all it really needs is that is that quick pop and go. I don't know if you know, it's black on black, you can't see shit. Alright, the moment you've okay. all been waiting for. Uh the how to clean a twenty-two. Uh or how to clean it again essentially. Uh, there's a there's a whole bunch of people out, out there that, that that like to like to use certain certain brands of certain cleaning products. Um, they recommend that it shoots straighter, that it's uh, that it's better. Well, it's, it, it's it's essentially snake oil at that point in time. Uh, I, I I personally like to use like to use hops number nine dabbed on the tail end of a of, of a boar snake. 
wipe it through two or three times and call it a day. But since my boar snake is in the wash right now, we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. And that would be the old divining rod. Now typically what you wanna do is saturate this end with clean solvent. You wanna run this end through to the other side. And then in order to, this, this this is this is the old timer's method to supposedly keep the rifling. But it's brass, it's not it's yeah, it's it's brass. I, I have had a couple guns go go awry by, by by going back and forth on these things, so I've been trying to keep it old school as much as possible with this with this st style. You just kinda you pull the tail end and you just simple. Now this won't affect the inside the inside bluing at all or the outside bluing at all. It may get it may get solvent on it, but then just wipe it down with a with, with either WD forty or what have you and go from there. It's not it's not the end of the world. I want to wipe this sucker down till it's spotless. Rotate inside the barrel, back and forth. And that is obviously not spotless. So you want to get it. All right, now that that part's done, Uh, you want to make sure that the chamber is cleared out, such as all the the crappy monodies on the inside. So you want to make sure. Oh, where's my freaking flashlight? There you are, right there. You make sure that that little valley right there, um, to the to the right hand side, is cleared out because that's where your ejector goes. You want to make sure that that uh, that's all free of corrosion. And because I'm a, because I'm a bit of a stickler when it comes to any results, uh, I always tight. I always try to tighten the uh, the barrel nut just a little bit because sometimes when when you're in the heat of the moment, it comes loose. Remington is sold out to the Imperials. If the barrel is facing that way and the chamber is facing, is uh, the chamber is exposed up, you want to go towards the top to tighten it. This thing was relatively uh, re re relatively tight. Could use a little more though. Make sure that's all that's all bunched up in there. Let's go a little more. There you go, a little dabble do you. And before that, before we get done uh, ready to go, you always want to make sure that oh you always want to make sure, you always make sure this, you always make sure this. Well you fucking start losing track of what you're actually doing. You're making sure how not to fuck up, and you are actually doing the fuck the, the tool simply. Um, where did I go? Okay, and you take a little bit of a little bit of grease, this liquid form by by this means, and you want to take it on the guy on the top bottom guide rod that we didn't disassemble, and kind of spread that nice and liberally on the bottom mass. Okay. Here's here comes the fun part. You take the bolt at an angle. Make sure that the make 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 sure that the that, that, that your um 
where I'm looking for extractor space controller. And sorry, at a slight angle, not not not, not, not extreme angle, because it has enough room to just wiggle around just ever so slightly to sit in there nice, nice and good. Now I like to I like to lube this up beforehand. So it helps out with the assisted with, with the assistiveness. And the tail end, just gonna guide that sucker in just like so. Fuck, I fucked up. Nope, no, you're not gonna do that. You're going to hold it up in the air, and let's slide around the air for a little bit, and with your best stink face. You're going to guide the spring on there. As best as you can. Gonna feed on there with your thumb. And by lubing both sides, you kind of indifferentiate the, the, the two. Then you're going to take your two, two Allens on the tail end. Sorry, I had to frame you for a second. You're going to take your uh, your two Allen screws, inset Allen's, and you're going to lock them into place. Locking means you're going to tighten one, or you're going to tighten a little bit of one, and move off to the other one. Tighten the other one off, a little one a little bit, and then tighten to the other side. Kind of just do a lock. Do one, two, one, two. And after doing a little bit of reviews on the interwebs, I found out that you tighten these down all the way tight and then a quarter turn off just to make sure that they're set because if you do if you if you do that you're 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 more if you if you give her a little bit of looseness you kind of are, are not bowing the rods out to the extreme so okay a quarter turn is going to be over here so we're going to take this little guy Quarter, right? And quarter. Perfect. Then assemble charging handle. Check for action. If it if it, if it if it's if it's binding up on you, you did something wrong. Uh, it should be free flow. It should have a little bit of you should be able to have a nice smooth action back and forth, uh, almost to the point of dry firing it. Well, I know where that piece went. Uh, this isn't looking too bad, so there's no real need to go through it. Um, everything's kind of lubed up as it stands now. What we're gonna do here is there's a little catch on the front piece. We're gonna slide that bitch right up in there. We're gonna find oops, oopsie. Find pin. Lock her into place. And then we're gonna go back to the stock. Wait, that baby.
stroke that shaft. Secure in place, drop it down. Remember, long one goes in back, short one goes up in front. I hope it did, because I really don't want to redo that again. I like to walk these ones as well. Uh, gives you more of a gives you more of a flow finish. Now people like to do the do the free floating barrel technique, which is you take a dollar and you walk it down the walk it down the barrel a little bit. Make sure that you can tighten it. Make sure that's uh, that's tightened up. And it gives you gives you enough gives you a little bit of rotation off it, but if you sit your uh, all right there we go. And then that's how you take apart and reassemble a Remington five nine seven, the most hated Gun besides the uh, 1911 out there. Perfect. Done and done. Last time, hold, hold open is functioning properly. Uh, both chain, both the uh, slight actions are doing fine. She's good to go. Now, a lot of people are asking how to how to remove rust from it. Uh, I like to do a little bit of hops oil. Hops, uh, hops gun lube with a little towel, preferably a microfiber, or gun reel silicone cloth. That's always nice to do too. It's a very, it's already kind of a enriched hops cloth. You can kind of rub rub things down with it, make sure that there's no fingerprints on it, what have you, because finger fingerprints is oil and you do not want oil on the outside of your gun. Or finger, at least a corrosive oil. Alright, well that's it. Um any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, uh hit me up on the newsletter. And here we go.